Amy Lee Anderson. Yes. Um, so could you come to the podium over here to speak, please? Your name? Council members and Councilor Javonka Beckles, I really want to thank you for not deviating your plan because I went on your Facebook and I saw why you came in office and you never deviated your plan. You said that you wanted to first put the community first and from you doing that, I want to thank you first and secondly, as a psychologist, a child psychologist, I want to thank you for putting up with some of those unbearable pains I suffered along this way. But I am here in happiness, in a moment of, of greatness that I have perfect city. Nowhere in the United States, no targeted individual can get this type of support that I have gotten. We just needed just one person, one city. And, and, and because of that, you all are our heroes. And we want to thank you. And I can go on and say much, much, but we are dying within because of the technology is so sophisticated. It's hard for someone who has no experience to fathom it. It is so sophisticated. So what we are saying to you all, please let us help you understand the, enough as someone outside looking in to our lives because we are pain and we are tortured and we are humiliated every day through our lives and our lives has taken a, on a path of we don't even know how and why we have these type of people on this planet that will harm in this type of way. And I just want to thank you all. And you, Mayor, from you being in the city and working in the service, being in the service, and for others to do this, I know that should sadden you. Jesse Beltran. Mayor, Vice Mayor, and City Council members. My name is Jesse Beltran. I'm the president of the International Center Against the Abuse of Covert Technologies. Our organization was formed in 2010 in Sacramento, California for the purpose to bring awareness to the general public and legal systems around the world about serious human rights abuses with regards to the utilization of remote influencing technologies. My colleagues and co-speakers today hopefully will get John Hall, who was the author of Guinea Pigs, Technologies of Control, which have been sent to each of you and, and signed. Um, I also have Dr. Edward Spencer, who's a neurologist from Yale School of Medicine, and Ben Colson, who is a PhD in psychology and therapist and co-author of a book about PTSD. I myself am a retired Sacramento City Fire Paramedic and a recent graduate of HMI and do provide therapy. Two victims. In 2010, I met to Dr. Hall, and when meeting him, I discovered this phenomenon, and I asked, why wasn't anything being done about this? He said, it's because of the symptomology. If everyone went through traditional medicine and complained about what they were experiencing, they would be railroaded into the mental health institutions. The fact of the matter is, is this is affecting all demographics of society, the poor, the rich, the elite. I see victims on a monthly basis and hear from hundreds of people every week. I currently have over 23,000 correspondents from victims, not only within here in the United States, but around the world. What we have discovered is that there are hot pockets within the United States where there are victims that are being exposed to these type of technologies. And as our speakers continue to speak, they will explain to you how that has developed. Currently, the hotspots are New York, Florida, Chicago, Texas, and California. Unfortunately, in California, the East Bay has the highest amounts of victims that we have collected on our database within our study within our organization. This is why we are currently here today. Okay. Thank you. Dr. John Hall. Dr. John Hall. 
Electronically not here, right? Yeah, Dr. Hall is unable to be reached right now, so we're going to have Dr. Edward Spencer here. Mr. Mayor, City yeah, Council, Dr. Dr. Thank Edward, you. sign up to speak. Okay. Uh, thank you for uh, attacking uh, this very difficult problem. And uh, there are a lot of people around the world, especially in Europe, who I attended a council uh, just recently in November, who thank you. Uh, I'm a retired neurologist. I attended Stanford University, Yale University, and a residency at the University of California in San Francisco. Uh, I've studied this sort of problem for a period of time, and it's been a mystery to me why medicine in general does not approach this and, and study the multitude of documents that are out there. But this is the case. And I won't answer this for you because this is an ongoing study, ongoing problem. Uh, this is really a uh, intense technology, essentially uh, what might be described as EEG heterodyning, that the entire electrical activity of a human brain can be captured in this uh, <laughs> supercomputer and certainly processed and then put back into someone else. It's science fiction, but it's not. Unfortunately, it's not science fiction. So naturally, this is, is difficult. So this is, uh, it, the technology is incredible, but basically this is a moral problem, an ethical problem. This is a violation of the golden rule, any ethics uh, or anything that's uh, decent. And this is a major thing to consider. It's also a, con a violation of our constitutional rights. So that's a, an important thing to keep in mind. Uh, and to bring it back down to Richmond, I know there are a lot of targeted individuals here, and the police encounter them and <clears throat> attempt to understand this and help them. The medical community uh, is hobbled by not having a differential diagnosis. In many of the psychiatric disorders, <clears throat> they should say, rule out psychotronic illness or disorders, but they don't. So they can't face it at all. Thank you. Ben Collinson. Hi, thank you all. Okay, two minutes. All right, let's go. Thank you all for your endurance. I see you've listened to a lot of humans. I'm going to talk really fast with two minutes to go. Um, I am a psychologist. I uh, have evaluated many targeted individuals who have previously been diagnosed as delusional and psychotic, and uh, my job is to deconstruct those diagnoses because of the uh, methods of my colleagues that can actually detect advanced nanotechnology uh, present in their bodies, both through frequency emissions and uh, lymphatic, uh, basically, like when you fire a bullet, there's a trajectory, and the police can determine the trajectory. There are chemical tests to do that. I was just going to very quickly, since it's two minutes, this is this month's issue of Smithsonian Magazine, which says the future is here. Brain-to-brain -brain communication is real. Targeted individuals report synthetic telepathy, voices in their skull, people putting thoughts in their heads, things that up until now we've been told are complete delusion and lock them up. But you know what? The capabilities exist. This is the National Nanotech Initiative. The last 15 years, budgets of a billion and a half dollars just by the federal government in non-black budgets. We don't know what they spend on the black budgets. Um, doing experimental programs showing how nanosensors in people can give us much more data about humanity. These technologies can be used for great good, but they have apparently also been used for tremendous evil and non-consensual human experimentation. There is great documentation on this. Uh, I do think it's a little unfortunate that confusion about the Space Preservation Act. Um, there are these systems, SCADA they're called. The acronym stands for Supervisory Control and Data Acquisition Systems. They include a component of satellite communication from a central command post as well as components inside the human beings who are targeted individuals. So although there is a component of these weapon systems, and they are clearly weapon systems by the major nations on Earth, there's an arms race on for the mind at this time, control of the human mind. The Human Brain Initiative is part of it. Uh, if I only have two minutes, I have to stop there. Um, I hope you will listen to these people. They are suffering greatly as non-consensual um, experimentees. A question really quickly to the speaker. Could you repeat the names of those uh, two references that you, you gave, the, the magazines? Could yes. you give me the names of those uh, again, please? 
the uh, first one, the current issue of the Smithsonian Magazine, the mainstream magazine, which uh, in this month's issue says communicating brain to brain, and this is merely what they are releasing publicly. The majority of the most advanced weapon systems are classified, and we don't know the full capabilities. This is just the supplemental to the president's budget this year's uh, the National Nanotechnology Initiative. And what I didn't get to say in my two minutes is the National Registry of Environmental Professionals, uh, which certifies people to do all kinds of environmental quality testing, has just certified SCADA, Supervisory Control and Data Administration Systems, as something that needs to be studied for its environmental impact on human being, uh, on the environment in general. And I am part of the HSCADA task force, how these SCADA systems are impacting human beings. And there are thousands of reports from targeted individuals that crimes are being committed against them. And my intention in coming here tonight was to support their claims so that law enforcement, uh, with as much support from political... I, I think she asked you the names of the magazines. Oh, so, okay. Yeah. Right. So. Thank, thank you very much. Lisa Becker. Hi, good evening. My name is Lisa Becker, and I came here from Racine, Wisconsin. Uh, I have been a victim of this technology for 14 years. I have been tortured for 14 years. My Justice Department has failed me. My executive branch has failed me. My senators have failed me. My congressmen have failed me. You are the only people in this country that have the courage to even put this on the agenda. That's why I flew all this way to thank you and to address you. This is torture, and it is enslavement. And any one of these people can tell you the same thing. We have suffered desperately, and I'm sorry if I'm emotional, but I'm very tired. But if you won't save us, save yourselves, because I promise you, this will come back to every one of you. Every one of us in this country are going to be tapped into these computer systems, and you are going to see what this feels like. Do something now while you still can. Thank you. Our next I have a question. Could you be more specific in terms of uh, how you feel that you've been in justice? Uh, you mean as far as the Justice Department feeling me? Well, in terms of your uh, uh, being a victim. I mean what I'm feeling? Yeah, I, explain a little bit to me how sure. you uh, perceive sure. yourself well, as being... Well, I have actual photographs of burns on my body. When I went to my doctor, uh, the response was, how do I know you didn't do that to yourself? How do you even address that? I've passed two psychological evaluations, not one but two. The one physician said, you're mentally sound as a bell. He said, I don't have any idea what's going on with you. When I go to sleep, when I go to try to sleep, I feel like I'm being lit up like a Christmas tree. I feel every cell in my body just bouncing out of my body. I can't even describe it. I get uh, electric shock of my rectum. I get electric shock of my nose. I've woken up with burns on the end of my tongue. I've had burns on the palms of both of my hands. I vibrate. I vibrate. I can barely hold a piece of paper without quivering. Does that answer your question? I'm trying to find what's the source of the... The source are these exotic weapons. They talk about, in 2977, they talk about the uh, space weapons, space-based weapons. Basically, in that document, it talks about exotic weapons. And that's what we're talking about. And the fact of the matter is... They did complete that global surveillance network. My cousin worked for the Defense Department. She worked on the global mapping of that system. And when I told her what I was going through, all she could say was, you're on your own. Well, I, I figured that out. I figured that out. If you would please, I urge you to pass this. I, I realize you can't enforce it, but if you would pass it, it might give other communities the courage to do the same thing and show our Defense Department we are not the enemy. We are not to be attacked. We are not terrorists. Most of us are defenseless women. Okay, thank you. Thank you.